the United States is now a couple of weeks away from what looks likely to be an extraordinarily close presidential election. In the handful of swing states that will decide the outcome, Donald Trump and his running mate J.D. Vance are running neck and neck against Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz, the governor of Minnesota. Supposedly solid and dependable, Waltz was picked by the Democrats to appeal to middle America. He was expected to be a counterweight to some of Kamala's kookiness. Unfortunately, things haven't quite turned out the way that Democrat strategists intended. Waltz has proved to have what you might charitably call an awkward demeanour. Less kindly, you might perhaps say he's straight up odd. Nervous during his TV debate against J.D. Vance, he managed to blurt out that he was, quote, friends with school shooters. Questioned about claims he'd made that he was in Hong Kong at the time of the Tiananmen Square massacre, his long and rambling answer looked and sounded shifty. But it's Waltz's record as governor of Minnesota that's proving even more awkward for Tim Kamala. Waltz has been active in Minnesota politics for almost two decades, serving as a congressman for the state before becoming governor in 2019. So how's Minnesota fared under Governor Waltz? Minnesota, for perhaps the first time in its 166-year history, is losing people. At a time when the population of America is growing, the Gopher State is flirting with demographic decline. People from every income group, apart from those at the very bottom, are leaving in significant numbers according to IRS data. You might imagine that Minnesota is one of those wealthy Midwestern states. It certainly used to be. But one analysis suggests that in 2023, Minnesota's per capita income fell below the US national average for the first time. One reason that the state has stalled economically could be that energy costs in Minnesota are now sky high. Perhaps, thanks in part to Governor Waltz's renewable energy agenda, electricity prices have shot up, even if they've not quite yet reached the sort of levels you see in Europe. This has hit energy-intensive industries in the state really hard. Minnesota once had a relatively low crime rate. No longer. Minneapolis, the city where George Floyd died after that notorious confrontation with the police soon after Tim Waltz became governor, was at the epicentre of the Black Lives Matter protests that followed. The city suffered extensive damage, and one of the city's police precinct buildings was overrun. It's still not fully recovered. Rather than stand up to the anti-police movement in the aftermath of the protests, Waltz and the local Democrat leadership were accused of appeasing it. Local police forces have since struggled to recruit and retain officers willing to serve. Crime in urban Minnesota skyrocketed. The state was recently found to have a higher crime rate than the US national average. Waltz, who famously presents himself as an educator, has also appeased teacher union interests in the state. His governorship has been a disaster for public education. Despite spending per student increasing significantly on Waltz's watch, proficiency in math and reading have plummeted. As governor, Waltz has seemed to defer to all the leftist interest groups from the anti-police protesters and public prosecutors to the green energy lobby and the teacher unions. If Waltz's priorities in Minnesota prove to be the same as the priorities for any future administration in Washington, expect to see such interest groups indulged at a federal level too. If Waltz's Minnesota proves a microcosm of what America under Kamala Harris's presidency is to become, America will be much poorer for it. <laughs>